All right, Calvary family, God bless you. Good to see you aboard today. And uh, man, let me make sure everything's everything's working here. And uh, let's put a few things up on the screen. Man, <clears throat> have we ever got out of uh, out of the habit here, out of sync? And it looks like I went back and looked, and it looks like August the fourteenth, I think, was the very last time that we had countdown to courage. And so anyway, and what, what a blessing it is to be able to come to you live today. Thank you for praying for us. For those that are not a part of our church family and are maybe online today, uh, way back in August, right around that time when uh, we went off the air, my wife and I both uh, contracted coronavirus. And for the next, uh, really, for the next few weeks, were very, very sick and then ended up in the hospital for uh, six days, and uh, anyway, long story short, God brought us through, and we're doing good, and we're on the other end of it, <clears throat> and uh, the Lord is good, and I'm so thankful that we're able to come back to you today by way of Countdown to Courage. Now, I know it's going to take us a little while to build our, you know, build our following back up again, our crowd back up again, because we've been off the air for, uh, I guess, almost six weeks now. But that's okay, and we're willing to do that, and we just hope, you know what, we're going to take the next 20 minutes or so, and we hope that this will be a, a blessing to you. I hope it will encourage you in the Lord. That's what Countdown to Courage is all about. We started this way back when this COVID thing just started, and we were not able to have Sunday school, uh, not able to have even <clears throat> services on a regular basis, and so... Uh, we thought, you know what, what can we do to try to connect with our people and reach out to our people and stay in contact with them? And so thank the Lord we have this platform. And so we thought, you know what, let's let's do something online. And so that's sort of where Countdown to Courage was birthed. And, uh, and then it got to be where even when we were meeting back at the church, some of our folks really enjoyed, enjoyed it. And so we just decided to keep it going at least until the Lord tells us not to. But we welcome you today. Thank you so much for being a part uh, of the uh, of the broadcast today. Let me do this. <clears throat> Let me do a few a few shout outs real quick, if I could, and then we'll get right into the broadcast today. It looks like Miss Sandra Gooden is watching. Sandra, great to see you today. Been praying for you and Gary, and it's great to have you aboard today. Uh, Rodney Tomlin is watching. Hello, buddy. Good to see you, Rodney. Appreciate you. Been praying for you and Allison. Good to see you aboard today, buddy. Sure appreciate you. Uh, is it Delina Klein or Delina Klein? And uh, hey, listen, we're we're glad to have you aboard today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Donnie and Tamara Gilly are watching, I think, from down in South Carolina or the North Carolina coast or somewhere. <clears throat> and so great to have Donnie and Tamara aboard. Uh, Jim and, N and Nellie Daniels. Hello, Jim and Nellie. Good to see you all today. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, let's see here. Um uh, Angie Lester is watching. Angie, God bless you. Good to see you, and we welcome you, and maybe all those at your workplace possibly, and good to have y'all watching today. Phyllis Hudson's aboard. Phyllis, great to have you today, and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Miss Karen Hoffman. Hello, Karen. Good to see you today. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're encouraged in the Lord. Good to see you today. Brother Mike Hill. Hello, bro Brother Mike. Miss Nina. And uh, man, sure, uh, praying for y'all. It was great to see you Sunday morning, Mike. And and hope you guys are uh, having a good recovery. <clears throat> and we're praying for y'all. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, let's see here. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Uh, Harriet Mason. Hello, Harriet. Hope you're having a great day today. Good to see you watching today. Let me see here. Uh, Ashley is watching all the way from Kansas. Ashley uh, good to see you. It looks like so far you get the long distance award. It's great to see you. Praying for you and David and the children. And uh, of course, uh, David and Ashley are serving. Uh, David's uh, with the Marines and they're stationed in Kansas. And so we welcome them today. Christine Edwards is aboard. Christine, good to see you. And uh, praying for you and Gary and hope that you guys are doing well. Uh, Janie speaks. Hello, Janie. Good to see you today. I sure appreciate you. Appreciate your text that you've been sending. Hope you and Wayne are doing well. Good to see you aboard today. Uh, let me make sure here. Amy Queen. Hello, Amy. It's so great to see you today. And appreciate your email. We're praying about your prayer request. And it's great to see you. And good to see you Sunday morning. 
and great to see you aboard today. Brother Curtis White. Hey, Brother Curtis White. Just uh, spoke with Brother White last night and was just talking to him to another brother uh, about Brother White. Brother White's having a prayer meeting uh, down at the courthouse this coming Saturday. And so please remember that event. And if you're able to go, I encourage you to go. And uh, boy, how, how many know we need to pray? In fact, that's what we're going to talk about today. And we sure appreciate Brother Curtis White. He's a good friend. Anyway, good to have you aboard today. I'm so glad you, you, uh, you've you tuned in. And we're glad to be able to come back to you today uh, by way of Countdown to Courage. Now, let me see if I can work this thing today and do a little switching around. I want to mention just a few things today. Uh, first of all, I don't have this on your screen, but we have midweek service tonight and we have moved our midweek service on Wednesday night to 7 p.m. And so all of our Calvary folk, don't forget that seven o'clock tonight, uh, we're going to be meeting. Now the doors will be open much sooner than that. And, uh, listen, we'll look forward to it. Bookstore will be open. We'll have a great time tonight in the Lord's house. The Ingram family from Brazil are going to be with us tonight. They'll be updating us on the work. And, uh, and then we're looking forward to a wonderful time in the Word of God. God's given me a message that I'd like to share with our church tonight. And so 7 o'clock, midweek service. We call it midweek refueling time. And so I want to encourage you to be there at 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, let's have a great crowd. Come with a great spirit. Come prayed up and ready to receive something uh, from the Lord. And then I want to make mention of this, our I Love America revival. Listen, I can't even tell you how excited I am about this. I mean, uh, Christmas morning, kid in the candy store, uh, man, uh, just getting ready to kiss my wife. I mean, man, I'll tell you what, I'm, I am pumped about the meeting is what I'm trying to say. And it starts this coming Sunday morning, Lord willing, Lord willing, unless the Lord comes, takes us to heaven or uh, God does something unforeseen. But Lord willing, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, we're going to kick off our I Love America revival. Evangelist Dave Kistler will be preaching for us. And then we're going to do it again on Sunday evening at 6 p.m. We'll be honored to have with us Brother Jordan Dagan Hart. Brother uh, Jordan's going to be with us, going to be singing, playing. And uh, man, that's always, Brother Jordan always does such a great job. And then of course, uh, Monday night, This Generation for Christ will be with us. They just put out a brand new CD, excellent CD. Y'all to get you one, they are wonderful. They really are. And uh, we're looking forward to This Generation for Christ uh, on <clears throat> Monday night. And then the Brown family will be with us on Tuesday night. And man, it is going to be a great night. Then Wednesday night, we go all the way through Wednesday. And so we want to encourage you to, <clears throat> to come and be a part of our I Love America revival. We're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful time together. Well, I tell you what, let's do. We're just going to jump right into it today. And, and I want to talk to you a little bit about this subject, the, the Christian's National Stand. And so if you have your Bible, you get your Bible handy, we we will put a few things up on the screen today, but it's always uh, better if you have your, your copy of the Word of God with you. And uh, But I want to talk to you a little bit about the Christian's national stand today and uh, just say just a few things. And the first thing that I want to say today is this. You know what? It is okay to be patriotic. Did you know that? You know what? It's like there's this whole different counterculture thing that's going on today and if you are a patriotic American or a patriotic Christian, it's like you're weird or something. And I just want to say today, you know what? It is acceptable and it is okay to be a patriotic American and to be a patriotic uh, Christian. And, and I want to tell you something. I don't, I, I'm not saying that I agree with everything that our president says or everything our president does, but uh, you know what? I'm thankful for our president today, and and I know that maybe that doesn't sit well with some of you, but you know what? I guess that's just, uh, you know what? Uh, one guy said you'll have to like it, lump it, bump it, or jump it. Amen? And so, you know what? I was thinking about this. You know, at least our president is a patriot, and that's what we're talking about, patriotism. At least he's a patriot, and when I say patriot, I mean he stands for America and uh, you know what? He promotes the red, white, and blue. I like it. I like to see how our president dresses. He always, usually, is wearing some kind of red, white, and blue. I love that. And uh, you know what? He promotes the red, white, blue, and blue. He stands for life. He stands for the freedom of worship. 
And, uh, and so I'm thankful for our president today. Now, listen to me closely before you turn me off. I want to say something real quickly and uh, that I think it's important that it be said. You know what? If you vote for Joe Biden, I don't agree with that. Uh, but at the same time, you know what? I'm not going to burn your house down because you vote for Joe Biden. I'm not going to come over when, you know what, you and your family are having a nice uh, meal out at uh, Olive Garden or uh, Red Lobster. I'm not going to come over and uh, disrupt your family time and disrupt your meal and ruin your family night just because you're voting for somebody different that I'm voting for. I'm going to tell you what that is. You know what? That's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. Just because uh, you know what, somebody's voting for somebody that you don't think they ought to vote for. You know what, we can still get, get along. We can still love one another. We can still pray for one another. And, uh, you know, I have a, a, a Trump hat that I wear. Some people don't like that. I'm going to be honest with you. Most, most of the feedback that I get from that is positive. People come up and say, man, I like your hat, I like your hat. And uh, but here's, here's, my, here's my attitude. If you want to wear a Joe Biden hat, do it. And uh, you know what? I'm not going to come and cloud up and rain all over you. And uh, But you know what? You ought to be a patriot. You ought to be a patriot. You ought to be thankful. I want to tell you something. I'm thankful for America. And I'll say more about that tonight in the service, Lord willing. But I'm thankful for America. I'm thankful for the red, white, and blue. I'm thankful that, uh, you know what, that I was uh, blessed enough. And I don't understand it all. I don't understand why God in his grace would allow me to be born in this great nation. But I'm thankful for America. But how many know this? I know we got to move on here. But how many know this, that things are changing and cultures are changing? And even in my lifetime, we begin to see politics change greatly in the attitude of, of politics and, uh, and, and attitudes about patriotism uh, are changing uh, a, a gr in, a, in great ways, since, even since I was a young man. And so I want to talk just a little bit about, uh, you know what, where should we stand in this climate of change as Christians, as born-again Christians, where should we stand nationally when it comes to our nation? Where should we stand? Well, Hey, listen, Just we'll just give you one thought today, then we'll go, Lord willing, a little further tomorrow. How about this? Number one is this. Now, we ought to stand still for our nation. The Christian ought to stand still for our nation. Now, what do you mean, preacher? I mean, I'm talking about taking the time to stand still and pray as the people of God. And how many know this? You know what? That we are so busy. We are so busy. We become too busy to pray. Now listen, that's what God has called us to do. If we're a, a, a Christian, if we're a child of the King, God has called us to pray. He said that men ought to pray, you know, not to faint. And so it's important that we pray. I think it was Ian e. Bounds that said this. He said, much prayer, much power little prayer, little power. And then he finished it off by saying this, no prayer, no power. And man, how true that is. Listen, we don't have power in our preaching today because we're not praying. We don't have power in our families and our child rearing today because we're not praying as we ought to pray as children of God. And I'm going to tell you something. We are struggling as a nation today because we've moved away from this thing of prayer. Uh, well, you say, preacher, it's, it's uh, you know, economic change and uh, financial change and, and all these, uh, uh, you know, programs and education and all these things. And I'm not against education. I'm not against uh, economics. I'm not against all these things, programs. But I'm going to tell you, my dear friend, uh, you know what? The answer to America's problems uh, rests in this thing called prayer. I think about John Wesley. I believe, it, I believe it was John Wesley who said this. He said, I purpose to rise every day at 4 a.m. and pray till 6 a.m. Well, somebody heard him say that, and they said, Mr. Wesley, I'll have you know, I'm way too busy to do that. And John Wesley replied, I'm way too busy not to. You know what, church? We need to pray. We need to pray as God's people. Uh, someone says, preacher, where should we stand as a Christian in America? Number one, Christians should stand still for their nation. We ought to pray for our nation. 
I want to draw your attention, if I could, and I'll, I'll uh, put this on your screen. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse number 30. Listen to what the Bible says here. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me. Listen to this. For the what? For the land. God said, I was looking for somebody to stand in the gap before me for the land, for the nation, for the country. And then he said that I should not destroy it. And then some very sad words, God said, but I found none. Did you know what God was looking for? God was looking for some people who would pray for their nation. And very sadly, God had to come back and say, I searched and I searched for some folks that would just pray, just stand in the gap and pray for the nation. And then God Almighty came back with those sad words and said, you know what? I couldn't find anybody. By the way, read the next verse. Because of that, you know what? That nation suffered greatly because people would not pray. Let me give you on your screen here, if I could, let me give you a very famous verse, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. Many of you had this committed to memory. And the Bible says this, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Somebody says, preacher, what's the answer for all the unrest in America and all the turmoil and all the hatred and all the bitterness and all the protests and all the riots? What's the answer? And here it is. The answer, my dear friend, is that God's people begin to stand still and begin to call out to a holy God and ask God to intervene in our great nation, the nation of America. Let me give you a let me give you at least a reference. I'll up here in the top right hand corner of your screen. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, rather, and verse number 1, the Bible challenges us to pray for our national leaders. Notice what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. And if you're driving, I'll read it for you. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Listen. We're to pray. Listen, you, you, you say, preacher, I, I can't stand President Trump. Ask you a question. Have you prayed for him? Have you prayed for him? Uh, I'll, I'll not, I mean, I guess this is okay to say, I'll not be voting for Biden. Uh, I'll be voting for Trump. And, uh, but, but I want to let you know something. I prayed for Joe Biden. I prayed for Joe Biden, prayed for his wife. I prayed that God would work in their lives. And, and it's, it's our responsibility. I know that many of you, you know what, are, you, you ta- or you're offended because of some of the things our governor has done. And I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. But I wonder how many have prayed for Governor Cooper. Oh, you say, but preacher, I don't, I don't agree with him. You don't have to agree with him, but you ought to pray for him. You ought to pray for those leaders that you like. You ought to pray for those leaders that you don't like. And, and you know what? I, I, I just wonder about something. I wonder what would happen in America if we would pray for our president and our vice president and our leaders. I wonder what would happen if we would pray for our nation and pray for our leaders as much as we complain and as much as we protest and as much as we riot You know what, I'm just thinking if all those thousands of people, instead of burning down buildings and bothering innocent people, if all those thousands of people would fall on their face and and call out to a holy God and ask for mercy and grace, man, I just wonder what would happen in this great nation called America. Well, you say, preacher, that leader is never going to change. Well, I beg to differ. Listen to what our Bible says in Proverbs 21.1. The Bible says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Oh my, oh my. Hey, listen, I just want to encourage us. 
Let's be people of prayer. Let's stand still and know that he is God. Man, let's, let's, let's earnestly pray for our nation that God would save her, that God would revive her, that God would protect her, that God would heal her. And, uh, oh, listen, especially as someone who just came from this COVID-19 thing, man, I'm going to tell you what, it's been highly politicized, but it's real. The virus is real, my dear friend. And we need to pray that God would, God would heal our nation and save our nation. Prayer. Prayer is the answer. Hey, listen. Let's see. It's time. It's time to go off. And I'm so glad that you came aboard today. It's a, been a joy to have you on Countdown to Courage. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow, 3 p.m. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the Christian's National Stand. Hope you'll be here. If you think this would help someone, let me encourage you to like the broadcast and share it. And then for all of our Calvary family, we're looking forward to seeing you tonight at 7 p.m. at Calvary. And then, of course, everyone is welcome. And we'll look forward to a great time in the Lord's house tonight. Listen, until then, uh, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. Love y'all. God bless you and take care.